<laughs> oh my God. Okay, that's the stupidest thing Apple will ever do. It. I'm switching to a PC. This is the newly redesigned Dell XPS 13 in Alpine White with a 4K touch display. And this is the HP Spectre X360 13 in Dark Ash, also a 4K touch display. You're looking uh, mighty fine over there, sort of like uh, something out of a James Bond movie. Thanks, you're not looking too bad yourself. Sort of classic MacBook meets modern iPhone. Well, uh, <laughs> thanks. So, what you doing later? Uh, right. Let's just move on. So this is not an apples to apples comparison, obviously. Aside from looking like polar opposites, the HP Spectre X360 is, like the name implies, a 360 degree convertible. Going from a classy looking business laptop to oversized and overweight tablet in literally the flip of a screen. While the Dell is lighter, smaller in overall size, and looks like it came out of the Nintendo factory, which is kind of cool. But apples and oranges be damned, let's put these things head to head and see what happens. Both of these laptops are nice. The HP has an all aluminum shell in a beautiful color, opens fairly easily, although it's still probably a two-handed operation, and is certainly quite a looker. But the hinges are a little too loose and the screen annoyingly shifts position when you're moving it around and oh boy, look at that screen wobble. And there's also some play in the chassis and I kind of feel like I could bend this thing with my bare hands if I tried, which I won't. The Dell on the other hand, this thing feels like a tank in comparison. The woven glass palm rest may not feel as premium as the HP Spectre, but there's no flex in the chassis and there's very little screen wobble when using the touchscreen. Nice! One small problem on the Dell, it's hard as f to get open. When it comes to build quality, I'm gonna give this one to Dell. The HP Spectre feels a little thinner, but the Dell XPS has a smaller footprint. At the end of the day, the XPS 13 feels like something I can throw in a bag and take everywhere, and I don't feel like I'm gonna break it. Yes, I am a 4K kinda guy, and both of these panels are pretty good. The Dell has a lot going for it with those thin bezels, and when you compare an objective metric like nits, the Dell does pull ahead in brightness. And I mean, just look at that image quality. But let's talk about the webcam for a second. So this is the HP Spectre webcam, and as you can see, it's, it's okay. And this is the Dell XPS webcam. <sighs> I actually don't care too much about the webcam, but I do care about Windows Hello, and I like being able to unlock the laptop just by looking at the screen. And you can see just how ridiculous the Dell webcam placement is when you're trying to set this up. This is a tough call, so I'm actually gonna call this one a tie. I think it comes down to whether or not you care about the webcam, because if you do, the Dell is just out. Especially if you're looking to use it for business purposes, it's just ridiculous. If you don't care about the webcam, I think the Dell pulls slightly ahead for smaller bezels and a higher peak brightness. Since I'm a mechanical keyboard guy, this is an important consideration for me, and let's just cut right to the chase. The HP keyboard dominates the Dell. The Spectre switches feel nice and crisp, and there's a decent amount of travel considering how thin the laptop is. The Dell's keyboard just feels mushy, and I'm way less accurate on it. 
but it's not a 100% clean win for the HP Spectre because of that extra column it has on the right side with keys for things like home and end, which I guess is convenient for some people, but really messes with my ability to touch type. All the other keys feel just slightly scooted to the left in order to accommodate that extra row. So even though the Dell is kind of spongy to type on, at least I don't get off center and end up hitting page down when I'm just trying to hit enter. But, but, the Dell isn't without sin with that silly key placement for page down and page up. If you use the arrow keys a lot, God have mercy on your soul. When it comes to the keyboard, the HP Spectre 13 takes it. Despite the extra column of keys that I find useless, the HP is far more delightful to type on. This thing is kinda okay. This thing kinda sucks. The HP Spectre trackpad isn't very responsive, while the Dell is quite usable. Neither are anywhere near as good as a MacBook, but they can both get the job done, with the Dell getting it done just a little bit better. These are both 4K screens, so they're both battery hogs. If you go 4K on this small of a laptop, be prepared to schlep around a charger anywhere you go. I didn't benchmark these and get concrete numbers, but I can say that in real world usage, the Dell is gonna last a little bit longer, maybe by one or two hours, despite having a far brighter screen. The HP Spectre feels like it's always running out of battery, while I usually get a few extra hours out of the Dell XPS. So these are both good laptops, but I did have some major problems with the Dell. Within the first few days of getting it, it stopped waking up from sleep when I opened the lid or hit the power button, and it took a nearly two hour call with their tech support to get it fixed. And their solution? Just reinstall Windows. Another nasty surprise I got with the Dell is something called Content Adaptive Brightness Control, which despite being really hard to pick up on camera, is some weird setting that changes the brightness on the screen based on what's on it. As a designer who works with color and contrast for a living, it's really hard to concentrate when your screen is flickering, which is just unacceptable. The HP Spectre, on the other hand, has caused me no trouble and has looked damn good while not doing it. The brightness doesn't shift around while I'm trying to work, and I make far fewer typing mistakes on its superior keyboard. So which one is the winner? Well, really depends. Do you prefer a nice keyboard over the trackpad? Or do you prefer screen brightness because you use your laptop outside a bunch? Both of these laptops are good and bad for very different reasons. In the end, I think the Dell has to go. <laughs> Just kidding, I actually have to send this back because it's really expensive. Oh God!